Welcome to the guided walkthrough on the Binitab statistical tool. Uh, the contents what we are going to have is basically an introductory module. So you can see it is all introduction only. This introduction has got four pillars that is micro, uh, Minitab windows, Minitab stru menu structure, Minitab toolbars and Minitab projects. In the Minitab windows, broadly we are going to look at all the possible windows available in the Minitab software. They are session window. Session window is the area where you are going to get an output, an interpretation coming out as an output from the Minitab. Then we have a data window that is where you have a worksheet like an Excel sheet where you will give all the input data. Then we will be seeing a project manager as you are doing projects more and more projects where you will have uh, worksheets then you have session windows then you have graphical analysis all these are recorded in a project manager. Then next is a graphical window which is a self explanatory thing we will be seeing more on that in following slides. As what we see in menu structure we are going to see basically the three menu subsets they are main menu standard toolbar project manager toolbar and there is nothing more to explain on toolbars and projects we will be seeing in the following slides. So as I said earlier let me re-represent the introduction of the Minitab software tool. Minitab is a st statistical software tool in the sense that it is not a mathematical computing tool it is only a very specific part of the mathematics it is only a statistical tool it, so therefore there are a lot of difference from MS Excel as, as compared to Minitab. Minitab has evolved over a large period of time somewhere around uh, year 2008 is the uh, we started looking at the Minitab as a statistical software then we have started having versions like 14, 16, 17. All this would mean Minitab 14 would mean version year 2014. Minitab 16 would mean version year uh, 2016 and similarly and so on. The Minitab usage also needs to be hands on for a Lean Six Sigma black belt. That is a minimum requirement. So, unless you are hands on with Minitab tool, uh, a Lean Six Sigma black belt will may feel handicapped. Minitab has become a standard tool throughout data analysis for all Lean Six Sigma practitioners. So, as we see it symbolically down, worldwide all Lean Six Sigma practitioners use one single statistical software for data analysis that is Minitab. And this is designed to help also for the beginners. The module what we are going to see now is going to help all the beginners of Lean Six Sigma practice to familiarize with Minitab. So when you open the Minitab windows, okay, you invoke a Minitab window from a start menu, you will get the windows as shown on the screenshot on the right hand side. I will demonstrate that as we walk through this slide, you will see a session window that is on the top. Uh, you will see a data window like an Excel sheet which is on the bottom half. You will see a project manager window. This is generally in the minimized state in the initial opening state. And graphs if you have already done some graphical analysis. If you have not done any analysis, if it is the first version open window, you will not see any graphical window. Let me show it to you a sample of how you would like to have a mini type window. So this is what I said. You will today is the 11th of March. You can see a screenshot of the mini type 17 version 17, which is the latest version. What you see on the top uh, half is the session window. This is where you will get the output. We will be doing some graphical analysis. You can see how the Minitab is giving you inferences on the session window. 
the region of worksheet is here which looks more or less like an excel sheet you can see uh, columns designated as c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 c6 and so on and the rows numbered as 1 2 3 and be in between these two you have one row left blank the row which is left blank is meant for the column headers that means if you are entering any data for under column c1 it will designate and show what is it meant for so similarly for column c2 and so forth and there is some significance to the arrow what you see here this is the data entry direction which is currently showing downward direction that means if you enter any data here on the cell c1 say 56 and then you press enter the arrow will move downward on the contrary let me click on that vertical arrow now it has become horizontal now i click a data 67 in here and if i say enter it is moving horizontally this is very very important which is a minor thing normally people miss to understand this and many a times the data entry can get flawed if you have not understood this directional aspect of this arrow okay we will go back to the slide So we are back on the slideshow. So this is on the. Uh, Vanilla, I am recording. So we will see a mini tab basic analysis. What you see, this is how the data set represented for call handling every uh, time for the sample of hundred calls. Let us analyze for multiple ways for the main histogram. Let me take you through to an Excel file where we have record kept some Excel file. Just Sorry, that is not the file. Uh, yeah, so we have kept some exercise file, the Excel sheet. So let us take some simple cases where we can plot a histogram. So here we can see a data which is meant for a one particular attribute month after month some data is plotted. We can copy this directly from an excel file and come to the mini tab screen. And copy paste. One second. I am pasting the data. Now you can go straight away to the statistical, basic statistics. Whatever you want, you can do and play with this data. Generally, this is the beginning of the exercise. So people generally try to understand to display the descriptive statistics. So working days is the variable. You can come to and click on to the column C4, select, it comes out to the variables. Straight away you can click OK. 
Now, as I said earlier, the sessions window is giving you an output. What is the output? Descriptive statistics for working days. What are the data? What is variable n? That is not notation is n. Working days is 36. That means there are 36 data points. We need not worry about n asterisks because it's a very statistical matter. As we grow along with Lean Six Sigma, probably we'll learn at that time. Then there is a mean of this data set, which is 22.33. There is a standard error. This is again another major statistical number. Let's not sweat out on this time. Standard deviation, some of you would have heard, it is a measure of dispersion. It is computing the uh, standard deviation from the mean, how the data is varying along the data set. That is 2.586. The minimum of the data value is 17. And there is something called as interquartile Q1 20.250, Q3 24. These Q1 and Q3 are some attributes of the box plot. Box plot is another tool. We'll come to that again later in few minutes. So the data point for Q1 and Q3 is shown as 20.25 and 24. Like uh, arithmetic mean, which is um, 22.333, there is another way of looking at the mean, which is called geometric mean, which is also known as median, which is, that is demonstrated as 23. And the maximum value of the data point is 26. This is how the descriptive statistics is displayed. The same set of data you can also plot to understand in a different way. You can get everything in a bokeh-like output, which is a graphical summary. So you go to this and take the variable as C4 and say OK. What you see here is a confidence level, which is 95%. Generally, statistics or data are plotted with 95% confidence level. So what you get as an output is now this is the first time we have got a graphical output. Now if you look at the graph, what all things you have got? You have got a histogram which is a bar and then what you see as a line on the top of it is called histogram with a fitted line plot. This actually shows the locus of the midpoint of each bar and it is doing a prediction activity and plots a histogram. What you see below, this is the box plot. Now, this objective of the box plot is to show you how when you give a data set, it will also it shows how the data is spread out, where is the mean, where is the median. It gives you a graphical representation of how the data is. What we saw this one, the at this particular plot is the Q1. You can see when you go to the corner point, it says Q1 equal to 20.25. Actually, it is decimalized to two decimal places in the interest of the space. It shows median equal to 23, Q3 equal to 24. And it says IQ range, which is called as interquartile range. That is 20.25 and 24. The difference, it is giving it as a 3.75. Whiskers. Whiskers are nothing but as the tail piece of the box. Tail piece of the box. Now, what it means for a box plot, this is not a session for box plot, but there may be some people who are not familiar with the box plot. The data which is in the box are critical, critical mass. Data which is outside the box are called as non-critical mass. Now, the next box, what it says gives is the at 95% confidence interval. It gives you a confidence interval between this point an estimate of from here to here where the mean can be statistically for any given data for this mean the data can come from either of these two points same is the case with median so for a data set given here as a sample now this statistical software has plotted multiple graphs nam namely histogram histogram with a fitted line plot, box plot, and confidence interval plots. Now, let us not spend too much time on the statistics piece. However, let us try to familiarize with how the data output is coming and how 
this is can be used. So, I am closing this graphical window. So, you can close this. I can also go to the PowerPoint. So, this is some insight into the usage of Minitab. So, what you see in this slide is nothing else but it is a piecemeal representation of a data, how it comes in the Minitab. Now, whenever you do a statistical analysis and that is one side of the story and when you are in the business, in the office or an organization or, or a consultancy job, you plot all these statistical graphs and inferences, you would like to do a reporting either in a PowerPoint or a MS Word document. Generally, people prefer PowerPoint because that goes well with the other aspects of presentations. Uh, the, uh, you can package quite a lot of information in a PowerPoint information. You can have a statistical output like this from Minitab. You can have a financial statement. You can also have a quantification statement. You can have variety of statements in a PowerPoint. So, you, what you generally do is you copy paste that into a PowerPoint and when you do that, you will have an output like this. However, as you get familiar and hands on with Minitab, you can, there is also another trick to populate the data in a particular section in a report window that we will do that in the last part of the session. Now, the same box plot as a quality tool for the same data, we can plot this as a box plot for the data what we have, you can go to a graph option, come to box plot. When you come to box plot, you will get multiple options. You have to choose what you want. Now, obvious choices is a simple one we want because there is only one group of data. Say OK. So, what is the variable? Here again, it is a working days. Click OK and then say OK. What you saw in the PowerPoint, you are getting it here in the Minitab. What I want to do is, I wanted to showcase in a PowerPoint presentation. And this being a learning exercise, I wanted to demonstrate online as you are picking up this content. So, take a moment to explore the concepts what we learned in a Minitab. You can summarize by clicking the Minitab windows in the main menu. And you can also do, you can also do an option of selecting a tile. I will explain that now in a mini tab, you have one graphical output like this, you have a session window like this, you have a worksheet like this. Now, you want to put all these three in a single window. There is a technique here, there is something called as tile. Go to windows, select tile you will get an output like this, all in one. You get a box plot, you have a session window which is now covered, you can use this grid in such a way to bring this descriptive statistics in a way it becomes visible. And you have also got a worksheet which is temp temporary and you can also toggle this window here to showcase people as you are discussing in a single window or you are already on overhead projector meeting and you, you are discussing and plotting this data. So, back to this recording.